Have you ever wondered why the universe is predominantly filled with matter and not antimatter? This question takes us on a journey through the cosmos, the grand stage of existence and its many mysteries. Our universe, a vast expanse of galaxies, stars and planets, holds secrets that have fascinated and perplexed scientists for centuries. One such enigma is the existence of matter and antimatter. Matter, the stuff we and everything around us are made of, has an intriguing counterpart, antimatter. Antimatter is not some science fiction concept, it's as real as the chair you're sitting on but it's remarkably scarce in comparison to matter. Why is this so? Why is there this apparent imbalance in the universe? The answer to these questions brings us to a fascinating area of physics, a concept that attempts to unravel this mystery. Today we delve into the intriguing physics concept of baryon asymmetry. Baryon asymmetry is a term that might sound complex, but it simply refers to a particular imbalance. Now let's not be intimidated by the jargon. To understand this concept, we have to break it down into two parts baryons and asymmetry. Baryons in the world of particle physics are a group of subatomic particles. This is where things start to get a bit atomic, quite literally. These particles include the ones you may have heard of in your high school physics class, protons and neutrons. Yes, those tiny particles that, along with electrons, make up the atoms, the building blocks of our universe. On the other hand, asymmetry, as the term suggests, refers to a lack of balance or equality between two contrasting things. It's like looking at a seesaw with a weight heavier on one side than the other. The seesaw is in a state of asymmetry because of this imbalance. So when we combine these terms, what do we get? Baryon asymmetry. This concept describes an intriguing imbalance in the universe. But it's not just any imbalance. We're talking about the imbalance between matter and antimatter. Now you might be wondering, what's the big deal about this imbalance? Well, it's a huge deal. It's the reason we're here why galaxies, stars, planets, and life as we know it exist. If there was perfect symmetry, every particle of matter would have an antimatter counterpart, leading to their mutual annihilation and leaving behind only energy. But that's not what we observe. Instead, we see a universe filled with matter, with very little antimatter. This surprising imbalance, this baryon asymmetry, is a fundamental question in cosmology. It's one of the great unsolved puzzles of science a mystery that physicists around the world are striving to understand. And so, if we boil it down to its essence, in the context of our universe, baryon asymmetry refers to the imbalance between matter and antimatter. It's the lopsided cosmic seesaw that tipped the scales in favor of our existence. To understand baryon asymmetry, we need to travel back in time to the Big Bang. This monumental event, the birth of our universe, occurred nearly 14 billion years ago. Following this colossal explosion, the universe was in a state of extreme heat and density, a seething cauldron of fundamental particles and energy. In these early moments after the Big Bang, scientists believed there was an equal amount of matter and antimatter. Picture this. For every particle of matter, there was a corresponding particle of antimatter. These pairs of particles and antiparticles were in a constant dance of creation and annihilation, keeping the cosmic balance sheet perfectly even. But as the universe cooled, something peculiar happened. Most of the matter and antimatter annihilated each other, as expected. But not all. A tiny fraction of matter managed to survive. Against all odds, for every billion particles of antimatter, there was a billion and one particles of matter. And when the dust settled, it was this one in a billion overabundance of matter that formed everything we see in the universe today, from the smallest microbe to the largest galaxy. So, what caused this asymmetry? That's the million-dollar question. The truth is, we're not entirely sure. We know it involves processes that violate certain fundamental symmetries of physics, but the exact details are still a subject of intense research. Here's what we do know. This event wasn't just a minor footnote in cosmic history. It was a turning point, a cosmic imbalance that led to the universe as we know it. Without it, there would be no galaxies, no stars, no planets, and certainly no us. This event is what physicists refer to as baryon asymmetry. Russian physicist Andrei Sakharov proposed three conditions to explain baryon asymmetry. These conditions, also known as the Sakharov conditions, are pivotal in our understanding of the universe's matter-antimatter imbalance. Let's delve a little deeper into each of these conditions and shed some light on their significance. Firstly, we have the baryon number violation. In simple terms, this condition states that a process must exist that can convert baryons, particles like protons and neutrons, into their antiparticles and vice versa. 
Without such a mechanism, we wouldn't have the imbalance we see today, because the Big Bang should have produced equal amounts of matter and antimatter. Moving on to the second condition, it's a bit more complex. It involves C symmetry and CP symmetry violation. C symmetry or charge symmetry is the idea that the laws of physics remain unchanged when you swap particles with their antiparticles. Similarly, CP symmetry or charge parity symmetry holds that physics laws are the same when you mirror the universe and swap particles with antiparticles. But for baryon asymmetry to occur, these symmetries must be violated. This violation allows for a slight preference for matter over antimatter, leading to the excess of matter we observe in the universe. Lastly, we've got interactions out of thermal equilibrium. This simply means that the universe wasn't in a steady, unchanging state when the matter-antimatter imbalance occurred. Instead, it was rapidly expanding and cooling, which is crucial because these out-of-equilibrium conditions are necessary for the baryon number violation to result in an excess of matter. These three conditions, intertwined and complex as they may be, provide a framework for understanding one of the most puzzling questions in cosmology. They offer a glimpse into the mysterious early moments of our universe and the fundamental laws that govern it. These conditions, when met, might explain why our universe is filled with more matter than antimatter. The concept of baryon asymmetry has profound implications for our understanding of the universe. It's like a key waiting to unlock the door to some of the universe's most profound secrets. It's more than just a scientific theory. It's a fundamental principle that could redefine our understanding of the cosmos. Baryon asymmetry is not just about explaining why matter triumphed over antimatter. It's about understanding the very fabric of our universe, how it came to be, how it evolved, and what it would eventually become. It's about answering questions that have puzzled the greatest minds for centuries. Why are we here? Why is the universe the way it is? And what does it all mean? By delving into the depths of baryon asymmetry, we're not just looking at particles and energy. We're looking at the narrative of existence itself. The story of how a seemingly balanced universe at the moment of the Big Bang somehow tipped the scales in favor of matter, allowing life as we know it to exist. The research into baryon asymmetry is far from over. It's an active, vibrant field teeming with brilliant minds eager to uncover the truth. And with each new discovery, each new insight, we're not just learning about baryons and asymmetry, we're learning about ourselves, about our place in this vast, unfathomable cosmos. Baryon asymmetry, then, is more than just a concept. It's a journey, a journey of discovery, of understanding, of enlightenment. It's a journey that takes us beyond the confines of our planet, beyond the boundaries of our knowledge, and into the great unknown. We're living in a truly remarkable era, an era where we're pushing the boundaries of what's possible, where we're challenging the very foundations of our understanding, where we're rewriting the story of the universe.